Hey you guys, it's Amelia Newcomb here. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching today. I'm glad to have you here on my channel. Today we are talking about dealing with a horse that has a lot of energy, that might be a little tense or a little nervous, and how we can manage this energy and these horses that have a lot of it. So a horse that has energy, it's actually a good thing because for me at least there's nothing worse than riding a horse that's lazy and that you have to kick and push around the arena. But a horse that has a lot of energy, it can be tricky because you have to channel this energy and sometimes the energy can lead into like tension or spooking or misbehaving. So I'm gonna give you guys today a strategy for how to deal with this energy. And I figure that since it's winter, it's December, I can't even believe it, but since it's winter, it's a good time for this video because horses always seem to be crazier when it's cold. I don't know why that is. Maybe you guys can comment below and let me know why that is that when it's cold, the horses have so much more energy. Also, before we get started today, I wanted to give a big shout out to my Patreons. So Patreon is a site that people can go and sign up and basically give me a little tip if you enjoy these videos, if you get something out of them. It just really helps me to keep making them, investing the time, investing in the equipment to make them better for you guys. So I wanted to read to you guys a few names of wonderful supporters and thank you guys who are already on that channel so much. It's really helpful. I will put a link below and you can check it out. So a huge thank you to a few of my supporters, Angelita, Barb, Becky, Cindy, Jean, Joanne, and watch. Again, you guys, these are just a few of people that are supporting me. Thank you so much. I couldn't do it without you guys. These little contributions really add up and they help keep me motivated and putting the time in for these videos. So I hope you guys enjoy this video on dealing with a horse that's hot or tense or has a lot of energy. And unfortunately, I totally forgot my microphone when I was filming this video, so I'm just going to be voicing over. Okay, so drifting the hindquarters, which is the technique that I use on a hot horse, is something that I start off in the walk. So you can see here how I'm pushing her hindquarters out. It's kind of like a big turn on the forehand. I'm using my inside rein to bend her and my inside leg to push her hindquarters out and you notice how those hind legs are crossing. So you see here the right hind leg is stepping forward and in front of the left hind leg. The horse is looking to the right and this drifting the hindquarters is like having your car in neutral. So when your car's in neutral, you can kind of rev the engine without engaging the forward momentum. And this is what I'm doing with this horse. And I'm doing the same thing here in the trot. You can see I'm keeping her on bending lines, circle lines, and I'm constantly keeping her hindquarters moving a little to the outside. So here that left hind leg is stepping forward and across the right hind leg. In dressage terms, this would be that I'm keeping her in a little bit of a shoulder four or a shoulder in. And for a horse that wants to get hot or too forward, this is a really useful technique because a horse like this, if you just tell her, no, slow down, don't go fast, stop going forward, that's never going to work. Using this technique of drifting the hindquarters helps me kind of burn off some energy and it also puts this to productive work because I'm getting a lot of things done here, right? Here I'm working on a little bit shoulder and right. I'm teaching her to bend to the right. I'm teaching her to move off of my right leg. Now I'm working on shoulder and left. I'm putting pressure with my left leg. I'm bending her a little to the left. I'm moving her off my left leg. You'll notice that I tend to carry my inside hand just a little bit higher than my outside hand. And then in the canner is kind of the same idea. So in the canner, you can't do, you can't expect the horse to move their hindquarters or cross their hindquarters as much as in the trot. But in the canner, same thing. I'm keeping her on curved lines, circle lines, 
because every time you make a turn and bend your horse, it's going to help a little bit regulate the tempo of your horse and not let your horse get going too fast. And I'm thinking about keeping her off of my inside leg over into that outside rein. So the other thing that's really important when you're on a hot horse or a horse that wants to go a little fast is your position. So you notice how I'm keeping my upper body back. Even though a hot horse will often want to get you to tip forward, you want to really keep your upper body back. The other thing that I'm doing, both in trot and in canter, is I'm keeping a little bit of tightness in my lower abdomen. So I'm still moving with the horse, but I'm kind of regulating how fast I'm moving with her because I don't want to just let her go faster, faster in the canter. Here I'm thinking, okay, I like the rhythm of the canter that she's giving me here. So I'm kind of trying to keep my hips going in this motion. And if she tries to make my hips go faster, I'm not going to follow that. I'm going to try to keep my hips going just in this motion. And you notice as I'm cantering her around here, I'm kind of just burning off energy. I'm not doing a ton of transitions. I'm just working on circle, a little bit straight line, circle, a little bit straight line. I'm giving her an outlet for her energy, which is so important when you have a hot horse that you don't just Say, no, you can't go forward, but you've got to let them go and then control them a little. And that's what I'm demonstrating here is that, like, you'll see, I'll go a little bit straight and then I'll turn again. So there she made a transition to the trot. And right away, after that transition, you saw how I right away pushed her hindquarters out. Often, hot horses will want to run after the canter. And so rather than just pulling back on both reins... I'm right away going to that concept of drifting the hindquarters. And so now the same thing on the right lead canter. Again, I'm thinking about my position, my upper body staying back, my hips not going faster, and keeping her in that little shoulder four with the shoulders in and the hips staying a little to the outside and her, her head positioned a little to the inside because this helps her to keep her focus. And I'm just kind of letting her burn off a little bit energy in a productive way. So she's doing what I want her to do, but she is also getting to do what she wants to do, which is go forward. Now, another thing on this horse or a hot horse is often in the canter, they'll start to push you to the outside because when you're going on a circle, momentum throws you to the outside. So when you are doing this at the canter, make sure that you're constantly staying on that inside seat bone. You've got to kind of stand up and push your inside seat bone over to the inside of the horse's spine. Okay, so now I make a transition to the trot, and she a little bit wanted to run there, so I'm right away going to that drifting of the hindquarters. So now I'm drifting her hindquarters off my left leg and pushing her over to the right rein and getting her to bend a little to the left. And that's so important that on a forward horse, pulling back on two reins is never going to work. So this concept of drifting the hindquarters, getting a bend in their body, keeping them in that little bit of a shoulder in is super, super important to being successful and to not just fighting with the horse. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate to you what happens if I just kind of lock up on both my reins and try and keep her from going fast by pulling back on two reins. So here I'm just kind of locking up my elbows, my reins are short, and I'm just going to try and hold her at the tempo with two reins, which is what a lot of riders do when their horse gets hot and fast, they just pull back on both reins. So it actually doesn't look as bad as it feels as I'm watching this, but the feeling here is that she's just really strong, she's kind of bearing her head down, and she's just wanting to go faster and faster. Um... And you can see in that transition to canter, because I was kind of locked up on both reins, there was more tension. And you saw her croup kind of go up. 
So same thing here in the canner. If I'm locked up on both reins, also you notice how I'm doing more, oh yeah, and then there she really doesn't like that. So this just goes to show you that with a horse that gets hot and wants to be a little strong, pulling back on two reins is never going to work. You need to go to this drifting of the hindquarters. So here I'm back to, you see I'm drifting the hindquarters. And you can see how when I go back to drifting the hindquarters, like her whole persona changes. She gets much softer and calmer looking through the top line. She relaxes a bit more. And for me, as the rider, the feeling is so much better because I feel more in harmony with her. I feel like we're kind of coming to a compromise where she gets to go forward like she wants to do, but I get to control her by keeping those hindquarters drifting, keeping her in that little bit of shoulder four with a little bit of inside bend. And same thing at the canter. I'm constantly just keeping her on a curved line, keeping her a little bit off of my inside leg and into that outside rein. That's much better there. So it's really important that if you have a horse that's hot or nervous, that as much as you want to, pulling back and locking up on both reins is never going to help your horse. You've got to teach them to bend, teach them to yield their hindquarters, teach them to stay off of your inside leg and into the outside rein. And you can see that was a nice transition. I right away am yielding her and making that transition into the walk without pulling on her. Pulling back on both reins will never work. Your horse is much stronger than you, and it's not a kind of pressure that they really understand. So rather than pulling back, go to this yielding, bending, keeping your horse off of the inside leg is much more productive than pulling back on both reins. And then the same thing applies to the transition. So now I'm going to go to some trot can or trot transitions. And you'll notice that in every transition, I'm drifting those hindquarters. I'm keeping her in a shoulder in so that I don't feel the need to pull back on both reins. So trot and now right away, shoulder in, drift that hindquarter. And so on a hot horse, drifting the hindquarters is your half halt. It's a way to, it actually engages the hindquarters because when you drift the hindquarters, you force that inside hind leg to step forward and through. So you see that there. Right when I go to trot, I'm drifting that hindquarter. I'm half halting her, but I'm also engaging that inside hind leg, which right now is the right hind leg. So that's another super important place to implement this drifting of the hindquarters is if you have a horse that tends to run after the can or trot transition, rather than just pulling back on two reins, try bending your horse and yielding your horse. And you can see here, as I went to the walk, I did the same thing. I'm drifting those hindquarters. As I went back to the canner, I'm drifting those hindquarters. So eventually, in an ideal world, when you have a hot horse, you work up to being able to ride a little straight, and then the second that you lose the control, you go back to drifting. You can do it in the walk here, like now I'm working towards my canner walk canners, but again, I'm keeping that concept of drifting the hindquarters as a tool that I have in my toolbox for any time that the, the horse wants to rush and get a little quick with me. The other thing, the other reason that drifting the hindquarters is super important is that often hot horses don't accept your leg, like you can't put your leg on them. So drifting the hindquarters, teaching the horse to move sideways from your leg is a really good way to get the horse to accept your leg. So I'm teaching her to accept my leg by moving sideways. Now there I pushed her a little off my left leg before the transition to the left lead canter. So it's really important that with these hot horses we teach them to accept the leg and often the easiest way to do that is to teach them to yield and drift a little bit sideways when you put your leg on. So I hope that this video was helpful to you guys. 
comment. Let me know if you have a hot horse. Let me know if this concept is helpful. I'll also link, I have a few videos of groundwork stuff that you can do because it's good to introduce this concept of drifting the hindquarters from the ground before you try to do it under saddle. So let me know if you have a hot horse. Let me know if this helped you guys. Happy riding and have a great one.